Hey everyone, what's up? Koki here. I want to make a quick tutorial for you guys on how I remove rigs from my animation images using Adobe Photoshop. So I'm working on a new short featuring SOCOM's Spectre character fighting a skeleton. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll take a look. Here's my sequence of images. Now today I'm just going to be fo focusing on this one image that we're going to be removing the rig from. But keep in mind that this image is part of a larger sequence and we likely be removing rigs from a lot of these images before we could complete the, f the finished product. Alright, so I already have Photoshop open, so let's go ahead and get started. So first in Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and open the image that I want to remove the rig from. So here's my image. As you can see, here's SOCOM Spectre and he's mid-air and here's his rig and he's fighting the skeleton. So we want to remove this rig. So remember, whenever you're shooting, you always want to take a clean plate, which is an empty image of your background or your scene that you're shooting in with your camera in the exact same position that you're going to be shooting in. So let's go ahead and open our clean plate. Now here's our clean plate, and uh, remember the rig is up here, so for now ignore that there's a skeleton down here since uh, there's little consequence that he's down there since most of the rig that we're going to be removing is up in this area. Now, the, for, all we're going to do is we're going to select the Move tool and I'm going to grab and click on my background clean plate and I'm just going to drag, hover over the image and then drop it on top of the image. Now, as I move it into alignment, you'll see all these pink lines appear when it's perfectly aligned with the image we're moving the rig from. And I'll just let go and let it sit there. Now, our clean plate still uh, higher up in the layer list than our image we want to remove the rig from. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock what, what it's calling the background, which is my main image. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the clean plate layer and drag it down to the background. Now real quick, um, if you look, you'll see my camera shifted a little bit between shoots. So I just want to fix my clean plate so that it's as close to aligned with my top layer as possible so that when I remove the rig, uh, you can't see a little bit of the shift as easily between the two images. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on a feature that's, uh, that's easy to see, like the cracks in these bricks. So the, the cracks in these bricks make some clean lines that um, are going to help us align the two layers. So I'm going to go ahead and select my top layer and uh, use the eraser tool. And I'm just going to make a vertical al align erase a line along a vertical axis and then erase along a line along a horizontal axis as well. Now I'm just going to go ahead and select my background layer again, my clean plate, select the move tool and I'm just going to use the arrow keys to move that background layer until it's aligned with my image. Alright, so there the vertical uh, on the vertical axis we're pretty well aligned. There you can see I'm moving the horizontal axis back and forth so let's say right about there we're aligned. All right, now um, our images are a little bit more uh, a little bit more similar to each other. Now we're ready to start removing the rig. So I'm, in, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the eraser tool and make sure I'm selected on the top layer, which is my image with Spectre. Now I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have a soft tip on my eraser so that it blends nicely with the background wherever there is a little bit of a difference in the two images. I'm going to go ahead and turn it up to about a size that's a little bit bigger than the diameter of my rig. So let's go up to about 60. Alright, now that I've selected my eraser tool, we're just going to go ahead and start erasing, erasing this rig. You can see everything is pretty clean and neat. Um, you can't really tell where I'm erasing it from. So we're just going to keep working down towards the character. Now when we get close to the character's edges, uh, I usually prefer to turn down the size of the eraser slightly. So now that we're just mainly have the edges left, let's go ahead and turn it down to say 25. So we're just going to zoom in and we're just going to continue to erase the rig around the character. Now. Um, with the eraser tool, you either have to keep it moving to be erasing, or you just have to um, continuously click, and you'll see it'll um, 
it'll initially do kind of the center of the circle and then as you keep clicking it'll keep moving out towards the edges to erase. Now if your images are large enough uh, you don't have to worry too much about making the edges perfect so even though I'm erasing a little bit of fabric here uh, in the grand scheme of things you can't see that level of detail in the final shot. So now that the rig is removed um, I'm just gonna basically go back in file and I'm just gonna save over my original image so I'm gonna go ahead and click file save now the file name is still the original file name which is what I want but it's defaulting to save as a Photoshop file um, I, pre I typically prefer to just back up all my original images and then just to save as a JPEG and overwrite the original file. So uh, ideally you'll be editing straight from your image sequence. So when I save this image, it'll retain the original number within the sequence for the file name. Uh, and you shouldn't, all your images will still be perfectly lined up for when you want to import them into Adobe After Effects or Premiere to begin the majority of your editing. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this as a JPEG and uh, overwrite the original file. Then I just want to make sure that I use the maximum quality so that I don't have any quality loss in this edit. So click OK and that's pretty much it. Now your, your uh, image within your sequence if you looked back at your image within the sequence the rig would be gone and if you do the same thing through any of the other images with the rig uh, your image will be finished when you import it into Adobe After Effects or Premiere you can just purely focus on um, other effects and editing without having to worry about masking all the rigs uh, for each keyframe and having different levels of feather on each mask and all of that tedious work all right, so another cool trick I just want to show you before I wrap up is uh, when you edit an image where you used a green screen, sometimes uh, you don't always, when you shoot it, you want it to have the character completely surrounded by green screen so that it's the most easiest in your post-production to just clean this shot up and uh, push it through to the final stage of the edit. So what you'll see here is I had some sticky tack and a, a needle that was holding this green fabric onto the rig to kind of to kind of um, so that I could chroma key out the rig very easily but if you'll see once again uh, these the sticky tack and the needle they're not going to come out with the chroma key so an easy fix for that is to come in to your image in uh, Photoshop use the clone stamp now whenever you use the clone stamp remember you just alt click to select the area that you want to reference, that you want to clone. So I'm going to hold Alt, click in a clean area of green, and then when I start to click over here, I can just erase all of that out real easily. And I'm just going to erase anything that isn't green or that I think uh, After Effects might have issues chroma keying. Now, you can turn up your the size of your clone stamp as you get further away from the character. So I'm just going to turn it way up and just erase all of this area all the way down to here. Now what you'll see is when I import this into After Effects um, I can just make a very uh, a very large mask around the character that I don't have to tune for every single frame of the animation and for the most part I won't have to do any masking in After Effects. Well, that's about it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you can stay tuned for my upcoming videos. And uh, for all you animators out there, uh, keep up the good work. And I can't wait to watch more of your guys' animations soon. Thanks for watching.